We have already come so far with my BMW M3. We bought it from a salvage auction and started to repair it, but instantly I wanted a little bit more from this car. So we've completely transformed this interior with M4 seats and an Apple CarPlay head unit. Transformed the wheels, brakes and suspension. And to top it off, we have fitted an ESS supercharger to the engine, but there is one more thing which we need to do. And that is finish off the repair so I can actually drive this car for the first time, which is exactly what we're gonna be doing in this video. There's still quite a lot to do. I think it's safe to say we're gonna need a new bonnet. Both of the wings were broken. The front bumper didn't even come with the car, along with a bunch of extra bits for the engine bay and also some headlights. But we've got to start with the simple stuff. So that means we've got the insulation to go on the wiring loom for the coil packs down here which Ethan's gonna do. The simple stuff. <laughs> and then we're gonna look at the nice shiny bits, which are the bits we all like, especially me. So Ethan got on with insulating those wires, but whilst he was doing that, I had some other jobs to do. Well, one thing which we do need is an air filter because I actually ran over the original one which came with the supercharger kit, which needed replacing anyway. So I have picked up some Piper Cross ones, which we're gonna put on the car now. <laughs> So to gain access to the intake, I had to take off this wheel and then we can fill up the new air filter. But I think I've got to stick to driving this car on dry days, considering where it's placed. Engine bay is now, I'm gonna call it official. It's completed. Nice, I do wanna send this plenum off for re-powder coating because I'm not that happy with the finish of it. But for now, it will do. Now what? Well, we've got wings to go on, headlights to go in, bonnets to change, bumpers, but there is one thing which we need to repair, and that is here. This is the structural damage on the car. This is what I believe made it a category S, and it's because it's ripped off the bracket that looks like this here. So we need to get that back on. So we have a replacement bracket from another car, and I can use this to mark whereabouts I'm gonna need to drill the holes. Now from factory, these are spot welded on, but I'm gonna rivet nut them in so I've got that little bit of adjustment. So with all three of those inserts in place, I can now bolt this in and attach it to the headlight which we've just mocked up. And although not completely factory, this will do the job perfectly. Time for a wing. Way. And painted already. Looks oh, good, doesn't it? Yeah, man, looks well, that does. So, this is actually the easier side because this one yeah. should technically just bolt on, but we do now have some other bits to put on it first. Indicators. Indicators. They're not technically needed on BMWs to be fair, <laughs> but we're gonna put it in just so it fills the hole. I use mine. No, you don't. So we can pop the indicators into the wings which just clip into place. And then start fitting the wing to the car. Luckily on this side, there was no damage to any brackets. Wing on, and it's going to be hard to tell what the colour match is like at the moment, but I know I'm probably going to need, well, I definitely need this door painted anyway because it's got a nice fat chip in it, so but, we're going to have to blend this no matter what, but we're blending. We're it's blending. blending. It's looking good, and I'm actually pretty happy with the panel gap, which I should be really because it's quite hard to get these wrong, especially when this side is hardly that damaged. But now, time for the bonnet. So Ethan's undoing the 13s here. This is coming off. And we've got another new one to go on. Go, Ethan. Your 13s there, my cheat. Ooh. We came prepared. So we can remove the bolts from the bonnet to the hinges and remove the gas struts and take that bonnet off. Happy. Happy as Larry. Bah. Oh. You dented my bonnet. Now we could just slap a new bonnet onto these hinges, but chances are it will never line up quite right ever again. So we've got some new bonnet hinges, one for each side, just to make sure there's, there's gonna be no problemos. Snaps. Snaps. Action! But as always, it was going way too well and we had to run into a problem. <laughs> why does it, why do cars hate me? Should we, should we show the viewers what's the issue? Yeah. This is getting painful. I'm gonna hand you over to Ethan because I'm just gonna go cry in a corner for a second. <laughs> Ethan. So, we've ran into a little bit of a problem. I've literally just lifted this off here, looked at the bottom, compared to that bottom, and it's very, very different. They're very different from every angle. Look, yeah, even the top. They're just, they're not the same hinge. Why? Just doing what, check on what they're for. Ah, don't they look familiar? 
Yep, that's what they're for. Well, I've already changed these ones, so what do I do with them? <laughs> right, well, we we're trying to do everything right, but now let's try the half arse way and see if it's going to fit with the old hinges because, well, we may as well. No reason not to, is I there? I think it'll work. You reckon? Mm, I'm, I'm very confident. I know there wasn't much damage up there, but the, uh, the slightest twist can really mess things up. There's only one way to find out, I guess. Yeah, isn't there? Well, let's try it. Yeah, let's give it's it a shot. The the it's not. So we try fitting up the new bonnet on the old hinges, but it just doesn't quite want to line up right. It's not going to sit exactly where we want it. These hinges, I don't think they're going to cut the mustard. It's not going to sit quite right, so I'd rather it be as good as it can be, and these hinges ain't going to allow that. So I've ordered some new ones. They should be here tomorrow, and hopefully I can get them on, and it fits perfectly. But there is still more we can do, luckily. Because there's still more of the front end which needs completing, so we can pop in the passenger side headlight for the final time and get that plugged and bolted in. Headlights are in. Looking nice. There's only one thing left to do, because we all know how awkward headlights can be, and Ethan sold me these, so if they're wrong, I want my money back. What money? Let's have a look. Hmm. That one on? Hmm. I think a refund's in order. What, is that one not on? Try it with the key. Hey! Shut Yay! Yeah, everything seems to be on. Give us a flash. Yeah. What have you got? Zen on. Indicator. Check the other side. Yeah! You got Zen on, man. Is that a good thing? Yeah, it's costing too cheap. God damn. God damn. At least they work. Big up. My chief. Nice. So at least they work and I'm finally feeling a bit more positive so I can fit up some of the trims in the bonnet including the vents and everything underneath it too. But we have some more repairs. All right. We have some wires here which need repairing because they've been caught and scratched up a bit just here and one of them being a canvas wire which makes it potentially problematic so normally what i do here is use one of those melt on connectors and well it's not the best way of doing it i know it's not so he's back again <laughs> we just cannot get rid of him <laughs> no we love having dips here but it's about time i learned what to do as well so he's gave me a little lesson on soldering and i'm going to give it a crack soldering it properly doing the professional repair that's it so instead of using those melt-on connectors, I'm going to re-solder these wires and remove the damage section properly and re-insulate it the old-fashioned way. So with the master on the job, Dips from P1 Auto Keys taught me through exactly what to do and how to do it. And even though it took a bit longer than if he was doing it, we did get there in the end. Now, I guess before this car hits the road, we need to see if there's any fault codes that are being flagged up on it. Because we need to make sure it's in the best health possible. And to do this, we can use the OBD11 reader. And it couldn't be easier to do. All we've got to do, take it out of the box and pop it into the car's OBD2 port. Just like that. Ignition on, and then fire up the OBD11 app. Hit connect, and we can see instantly OBD11 has detected that this is a BMW M3. And with a touch of the button, we can scan every single module on this car for fault codes. Uh-oh, not looking good. We've got 28 active on this car at the moment. So it looks like we've still got a fair bit more work to do here. But for now, I can clear all of those fault codes and see which ones come back once I've driven the car. And the main two that come back are the pedestrian protection sensors, which are the ones on the front which I've ordered in, and also we've got one for the junction box being for the auxiliary water pump which might explain why I keep getting a light on the dash but OBD11 can do so much more than that because it's also got one touch applications for BMWs from F series to I series and also all VAG group cars meaning you can customize them to your liking say for example on my X3M we managed to turn on in the last video the full screen Apple CarPlay meaning that instead of having a cropped screen we get the full width of the display in the car showing your maps and music along with so many other features which you can activate on your cars along with basic diagnostics for all cars fitted with an OBD2 port so if you want to grab yourself an OBD11 device use my link in the description and discount code SLICKS to save yourself some money and take control of your car so thank you OBD11 for making these videos possible along with you guys watching at home but let's crack on with this M3 and whilst we're in this area, it was time to replace the drop links too. So I had some brand new ones from BMW and I can bolt those straight up. Yeah. 
Then it was time for some old bits to go back on. So we've got the under tray, the aluminium one to go back on, which is held in with seven bolts. And because we managed to repair that damaged bracket, I can bolt the driver's side wing onto the car too. And with that done, progress is being made. So I can reattach the side skirts, now both of the wings are on, and also these door shut sill plates. And it's all starting to come together. There's just one more thing I'm waiting for in the front bumper, which is a crash sensor essentially, which sits just here, and that's gonna be here in the morning. So, well, the thing that we need to do after that is put a bumper on. And luckily, I've got one and it's been painted. Pretty nice. But it is absolutely bare, there's nothing on it, so I need to build it up, ready to go on the car for when those bits show up tomorrow. So first in is the rubbers and also the parking sensors. Followed by the grills, but I'm not 100% sure if I love these, I may change them at a later date. And that is looking smart, but there's one other part I want to keep looking smart for longer, which is the wheels. So whilst these were removed from the car, we gave them a good clean down and also protected them with a ceramic coating. And then it was time for the front badge, which is a real finishing touch on the front end. But now it is the next day, meaning the new bonnet hinges are here. So very quickly, we can get these fitted up and look at our paddle gaps to get those right. And we're finally getting somewhere. So bonnet is on. There we go. And boom. Nice. Nice. And it is finally time for the bumper. So I've changed all the clips and bolts for nice new ones. Let's get it on. So nice and simply, we can now plug in all of the parking sensors and pop this into place, even if my mate is just waving his arse in the camera. But with all the bolts in for that, we can now finally see how it's gonna look. Bring it down! Woo! Oh, that was brave. Nice, nice, nice. Damn, she's looking good. Mmm. And now we need to show you guys this because we've got a new under tray modeled by Ethan from Mum Mumbry Motorsport. I got it from Chris through Chris at Modstock, but uh, what's uh, wrong with the standard ones? Not very think? good, mate. And when you want to go fast, these are a bit more sturdy underneath. Stop stone chips coming up and sabotaging your power steering lines, cooling lines, all of that malarkey, larky, larky. That's the last thing you want, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna hook a GoPro up under there because we've also got everybody hey. loves <laughs> dips. Yeah, we've got a headrest restraint we need to code out and the seat occupancy sensor we need to code out. So we're gonna virtually link with defined coding. If you need them, the link's in the description. And we're gonna code those features out as well as doing a GTS gearbox map on the car as well. So nice. it's all happening at once right now. It's crazy times. So whilst Ethan was underneath the car unbolting the bits which I bought, which apparently I don't need, and fitting up the new aluminium under tray, Define Coding were linked to my car through Dips' laptop and they were flashing on the new software. And it was all happening so fast, the wheels were going back on and we we're almost ready to put the car back on the floor. We're done. GTS gearbox map is on. Yeah. The active headrest has been coded out and the seat occupancy sensors coded out. Spot on. It looks like you've done loads of work. And yeah. I've, I've literally been sitting here. Yeah, you've nothing. had to do nothing. You've just <laughs> had to sit there. <laughs> but that does mean that for this video, we've done everything that we can. So that means that because we now have a full front end, every, all the wheels on, all the suspension, all the coding, I can actually drive this car now, which feels pretty nuts because both of these BMW projects really have been dragging on a little bit and now, actually feels like we're making some progress, which is wicked. So let's get this on the floor. Let's go for a rip. And we have come so far with this project, turning it from a bog standard crash damaged example to what I think is almost the perfect specification, even if there is still some more mods I wanna do. 
But not only have we modernized the interior of this car and the usability, we've also upgraded the performance to mean that now it should match or better any brand new BMW straight out the showroom. But I guess it's time to find out. Here we go, first drive in the supercharged M3. Don't know how it's gonna go, but we're gonna find out. And I'm hoping this car is gonna be everything I ever imagined it to be. tell you straight away the sound does not disappoint that v8 sounds insane but you can hardly hear it supercharged but i don't know if that's such a bad thing at all i was perched outside in the pouring rain trying to make myself a seal I always get a little bit worried when doing this because I had it with my Golf R. I didn't feel like I instantly gelled with the car, but this just feels nuts. <laughs> sounds nuts absolutely nuts I'm already blown away and I've hardly gone anywhere <laughs> And the power delivery is nothing like what you'd expect from like a 600 horsepower car because normally with that sort of power you've got a big fat turbo on there which makes it come in super late and be super lively whereas this is actually It was really manageable, <laughs> but it sounds even better. And I can't help but think, ever since this M3 finished its production, they were never quite as good, or definitely didn't sound as good since. This car, honestly, it needs an alignment doing definitely, because it's so unsettled over the bumps, even though it drives pretty straight, but... What a car, it's getting my heart going, it's getting my heart going. It's, and here's the thing that's nuts, because an E92 M3 is a car that's been on my bucket list for so long now. And thanks to you guys who are watching at home, not only have I managed to get one, I've managed to get what is almost my perfect specification and put a supercharger on it. And it's all thanks to you guys, and especially if you subscribe, I wanna thank you so much. If you're not subscribed, just go down there, hit that subscribe button, it's completely free to do so, and helps me out a bunch, and helps you see my videos too. And although I never realized it, this is my dream. I'm sharing my passion, something which I'm learning with you guys at home, but also making some great friends along the way. Which to me is the beautiful thing about cars. It brings people together, sharing their skills, their passion for cars, and everything they know. And together you can make memories and friendships that you'll never forget. And if that means that one by one we can save some of these cars from the scrapyard in the sky, and all of us can learn a thing or two along the way, does that not just make this entire car rebuilding community on YouTube one of the best things to come out of social media? But the strangest thing is, whenever I get near to finishing a project like this, I can't help but have a bittersweet feeling. After my And that's because it feels like the end of a chapter. But the great thing about when one chapter ends is it means that another one begins. I truly hope you've enjoyed this M3 build series so far, but we're not done on it just yet. There's still some more to do, which is pretty exciting, but I feel like this is a pretty epic moment being able to drive this car for the first time. But I'm going to be going on the True Rally, 
with Jack McNeil and Lee Lockwood. And if you guys want to join me, there is going to be a link in the description for you to be able to do so. I think there's only a few spaces left. And I believe the first two people to get on there get a slightly discounted rate through using my code down there too. So if you want to join me on a trip to the Nürburgring with me in the E92 M3, then you better be quick. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed already, you don't realize how important it is. And I will catch you next time.